So you're wondering how to DJ with the Electron Octatrack. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hook it up and what you need to know coming up next. Hey, what's up, amigos? Mayan here, helping you grow your music creative process. I am recording artists with labels such as Global Underground, Moody Recordings, and No Rub with Music, just to name a few. In this channel, you're going to find the behind the scenes on how I make music, my creative process, and how I work with uh, software synthesizers, hardware synthesizers, and other uh, equipment that I use in the music creation process. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and click the bell so you'll get all the latest updates uh, from my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over how to DJ with the Electron Octatract and why you would want to do this. Uh, I know the holidays are coming up and uh, I've been kind of like debating what piece of gear I'm going to be taking on my travels. I'm going to be traveling to different countries uh, for the holidays and I've been struggling, you know, like what should I take, what should I bring and uh, you know, I I love the Octatrack so that's one of the reasons why I, I, I'm going to bring it along with me and I know that there's opportunities for me to like do a couple of gigs of where I'm going to uh, but at the same time, I don't want to bring my other gear that I usually use for DJing. So I was thinking, how can I use the Octatrack to get that going? So uh, I kind of like figure out the best way to do that. And I'm going to show you some of the secrets, but how to like set it up and what else I'm going to be using in my travels. I think that the Octatrack gives you that flexibility to be able to DJ, but at the same time, add your own... Uh, flavors to the tracks and, um, and you can like set it up rather uh, easy but at the same time you just have to know where to go and I'm going to show you that so yeah stay tuned let's, let's do this let's go to the studio and let's get this done all right so the first step is to obviously start a new project right so I'm gonna start a new project so change, and we are going to call this one DJ Start, okay? So this is going to clear everything that I had in this previous setup. Hopefully I recorded the stuff that I had here uh, <laughs> for one of the projects that I was working on. But anyways, the other thing that we need to do is we actually need to upload some tracks, right? So we're gonna go to enable the USB disk access now as enable. And then we're gonna plug it into my computer, right? Uh, a key thing that you might wanna do is add the BPM at the beginning of the track so it's easier to locate the BPM that you're gonna be using. Um, and then you're able to like uh, move the tempo around with the Octatrack. Uh, hey guys, so I'm, as I'm editing this video, I'm noticing that it's really long, so I'm going to have to split it into two parts. One with just the basic DJing uh, aspects of the Electron Octatrack, and the second part is going to be all the effects and percussions for the Octatrack uh, to spice up your DJ set. So yeah, just hang in there, and uh, I'll see you back in the video. The big elephant in the room is, why would you want to bring your Octatrack to DJ with when you can do it with CDJs or vinyl or like whatever you like DJing with and to be honest for me it's more on the ability to kind of like do my own patterns live and on the fly add different elements that I think that they're fun to play with you know um, because at times I've seen that I get a little bit bored when I'm DJing and, and it's, it's sometimes you just need a little bit extra as an artist right so that's that's the reason why I do it uh, I mean you can hate on that you can hate on like bringing more equipment to the DJ booth but I just think it's fun you know adding your own flair it's always really great so so this is gonna be your deck A this is gonna be your deck B and then we're going to add some samples here for later on so I can 
show you how you're able to like move things around so like uh, you can get like effects and all this other stuff going on right okay so let's go pick up our tracks right so you're gonna do a static track right because we want the entire track to be going through so we're gonna go to our audio and then I made a folder it's called DJ startup and then we have the first track that we're gonna put on the deck A right and then we are going to go to track 5 and that's going to be our other track that we're going to be putting in there right now this is going to be one of the tracks that I'm going to be mixing in and this is the other track right they're both in the same BPM range, but there's a couple of things that we need to do because we are going to be using the crossfader uh, to help us out with the mixing process, right? So first thing that we have to do, right, is the following. So we're gonna bump up the volume, right, for both tracks. So like all the volumes coming up. So technically what you could do, right, um, is uh, you could assign the crossfader to drop one of the, um, like the levels of each track and do it like that. But if you're going to be using external effects or even the effects of the OctiTrack, uh, you don't want to like cut right away the effect because if not, you know, your set's going to, so it's gonna sound funky, right? So after we've uploaded the tracks to each one of the the tracks, deck A and deck B, right? The other thing that we need to figure out is how we're going to be able to use the crossfader to manage their volume, so we can like, uh, you know, we, we can we can mix in the songs, right? So one thing that we have to do, right? It's uh, we're gonna press, so for instance, like for deck A. We want to make sure that all the way to the right, right, we're going to use the crossfader volume, and all the way to the right it has to be on the max, right, because that's the maximum volume for this track, and then we want to make sure that the, the crossfader volume is on the minimum for when you go to like scene B of the crossfader, right? So we want max and we want minimum. Right, so we're gonna play this track. And when we go to the other side, as you can tell, right, the volume is gonna be dropped, which is great. Then we're gonna be setting up the other one. When it's on this side, this one's set to max. And on this side, it's set to minimum, right? So we can be cross-faded between tracks. Okay, so the other thing that we need to like observe when we're DJing, right, is that if we keep this, it's going to be a loop, right, a four bar loop, the same for this side, right? So if we want to let the track go the entire way, you know, we just have to like uh, untrigger this trigger right here. And then we're able to like use the four bars of the other track you know, as you would do once you're mixing music, right? That's your mixer, right? So I'm gonna go over here. So as you can see, right now I'm mixing deck A, right? From the other track that I've been playing. And then when I'm ready to let it go, you know, so like the track will begin, I just click the trigger, right? And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to make sure that this track is turned off, right? So this is just the basic example. So right now, if I set both tracks, right, to start playing at the same time, you will hear both of them coming from one side to the other. Okay, ready, go. And it's just a four bar loop, right? 
Okay. So that's kind of like the basics when it comes to like DJing with the Octatrack, right? All right, guys, question of the day. How are you using your Octatrack? Are you using it for DJing or just for music production? Uh, please leave a comment below and let me know how you're doing with that. All right, guys. Bye. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh,